A motion for the executive minutes of October 13th, 2021. So moved. We'll Audrey will give second. you the second on that one. Okay. Any, any uh, we already have this discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 And a motion for the regular minutes of October 13th, 2021. Second. Any discussion or correction? All, all right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, I'm sorry, I was muted. <laughs> Couldn't resist, sorry. <laughs> you might not have caught that. I was just uh, moving my lips, not saying anything, in case you didn't catch that at home. Uh, anyway, <laughs> welcome back to in person. And it's uh, certainly nice to be uh, sitting here in the count and not to be sitting here by myself, which is how I conducted most of the meetings over the last 18 months. And um, you know, as we go through tonight's meeting, we've got uh, Michael in the back in the control room there with uh, our feed to uh, YouTube, li YouTube Live. You know, we'll continue to uh, review our, how our meetings go and uh, tweak, our, tweak the system. But I want to welcome all those that came out tonight in person and all those who are watching us live or maybe recorded later on on YouTube Live. Two things going on. On uh, Saturday, October 30th, the Chamber of Commerce, talking about in person, returning to normal, hosted their annual Halloween parade after last missing last year. The weather was uh, perfect, though maybe a little breezy, but the turnout was incredible as trick or treaters enjoyed the parade, the magic show, and visiting all the businesses we're giving out candy downtown going well into the afternoon. <coughs> and just my, though I was not a judge, I'll give you my uh, favorite costumes. One were, was a family dressed as road construction sites, the two parents wearing uh, orange vests, and a three-year-old dressed as a traffic cone. <laughs> and my other uh, favorite was a uh, little older uh, young girl dressed as a, a claw vending machine, you know, those that take all your money and, uh, and trying to grab a prize, and so she had those prizes in a box, and it was uh, very impressive, and I think I lost $20 before I realized it wasn't real. Uh, and then, later in the day, I, uh, or that evening, I played uh, Mayor Albright in the Madison Presbyterian Church Haunted Cemetery. It was night, a night that was scary, but full of stories of Madison's history. And her own Jim Burnett and members of the church put together a great night, and, um, I had a lot of fun playing Madison's first and longest serving mayor, James Albright. And please mark your calendars uh, for next year. It's a, a great event. And I want to recognize our, one of our great volunteers, Kathy Cacaval, who is uh, Sustainable Jersey's latest sustainable hero. <laughs> and it's great to hear applause for the first time in 18 months. 
Um, but she, Kathy certainly deserves it. Her dedication to uh, our our uh, sustainable committee and to Madison and to, to creating a sustainable wor world is incredible. I encourage you to go to www.sustainablejersey.com and get some information on everything she's been doing. And now the employees, month of November, Stacy Dooley from the Purchasing Department, Bonnie Okaikehi, Recycling Coordinator, Coordinator, and Sarah Murphy from the Finance Department have been selected as the employees of the month of, for November. For several weeks, they helped out in the tax collector's office, which was short-staffed short because of an employee sick leave, which occurred during the very busy third quarter tax season. With their assistance, annual tax bills were sent out on time and payments were processed without any delays. And then we have a following um, anniversaries to uh, recognize. Dan DiBiase in Public Works, celebrating 20 years on November 6th. Jim Matina, our electric utility superintendent, will celebrate 35 years on November 24th. And Sergeant Jim Caveza, Police Department will celebrate 20 years on November 26th, so please congratulate them. And we have our wireless. Yep, yes. Please come down and uh, join me. Whereas in 2021, estimated 60,000 people will be diagnosed with pancreatic cancer in the United States and 48,000 will die from the disease. Whereas pancreatic cancer is currently the third leading cause of cancer death in the United States and each person's chances of getting this cancer can be affected by certain risk factors such as tobacco use, being overweight, family history, and inherited genetic syndromes. And whereas early pancreatic cancers do not cause any signs or symptoms, making it difficult to diagnose until it has grown very large or already spread outside the pancreas. And whereas approximately 1,360 pancreatic cancer deaths will occur in New Jersey in 2021, and whereas more than 495,000 new pancreatic cancer cases were diagnosed worldwide in 2020, and whereas the good health and well-being of the residents of Madison are enhanced by a direct result of increased awareness about the symptoms and risk of pancreatic cancer and research into early detection causes and effective treatments. Now, therefore, I, Robert H. Conley, the mayor of Borough of Madison, on behalf of the governing body, hereby proclaim November 18, 2021 as World Pancreatic Cancer Day in Madison. Well, on behalf of my sister Patricia, my whole family, I want to thank the mayor and council for bringing awareness to this terrible disease that very often goes undiagnosed and towards too late. Thank you so much, Lizzie. Right now on to reports from committees, public safety. Good. Council Good. President Byrne. Good evening, Mayor. For tonight's meeting, during the month of October, the fire department responded to 16 general alarms, 18 still alarms, 31 investigations, 31 medical calls for a total of 96 responses. For Two department drills were held, 55 fire prevention inspections were made, and 28 smoke detector CO resale inspections were conducted. Last week was, busy, was a busy week for the fire department. They responded to two fires in town and one mutual aid call into Parsippany. On Monday, November 1st at approximately 8.20 a.m., the fire department responded to the office building at 2 Geraldo Farms for a reported fire in the cafeteria's kitchen. 
The building was evacuated and the cause of the fire was found to be a burning electrical cord for a large commercial electric cooking grill. On Wednesday, November 3rd, at approximately 12.30 p.m., they responded to a storage shed on fire in the rear yard of a Shunpike Road resident. The contents of the shed and the shed itself were badly damaged. Shunpike Road was shut down for a short period of time while units operated at the fire. There were no injuries. On Friday, November 5th, at approximately 1.15 a.m., the fire department, along with many other departments and agencies from our area, responded to an ap apartment fire in Parsippany located in the Powder Mill Heights apartment. The fire was contained to the apartment of, of origin. From the police department, on October 30th, Madison police took part in trunk or treat in the parking lot outside of the Madison Volunteer Ambulance Squad headquarters. Officers from Community Relations Unit and the patrol business greeted residents and handed out candy. On November 3rd, 2021, Madison Fire Department gave a conditional offer of employment to Mr. Austin Nash of Florham Park following an interview process. Austin is currently a recruit in the Essex County Police Academy and is slated to graduate on March 4th, 2022. Austin will replace one of our recent retirements. On November 6, 2021, the Madison PBA 92 and officers held a food truck festival outside of police headquarters in Lot 3 on Kings Road from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Attendants enjoyed food from 15 plus gourmet food trucks, great live music from Naughty Humphrey and Grand Theft Auto, hatchet, to hatchet tossing, and boardwalk style games. The event benefited the Madison PBA and the Mako family, whose high school age son is battling a medical condition. This event is another that is helping to continue the strong relationship between Madison residents and our office. That's my report. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, Finance Borough Clerk, Ms. Bailey. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just want to briefly discuss R295-2021. This is a budget amendment. Unlike a personal or business budget, once the municipal budget is passed, it is set and cannot be unilaterally changed. So we usually call this a spending plan because the official state budget document details the amount that we can spend on specific items, including rock salt, court salaries, and about 98 other items. So if we want to increase a budget line in, during the year, the con uh, council must approve approved by a two-thirds vote a resolution to amend the budget, which is what we're going to do tonight. This will increase, tonight, we will be increasing the amount in the fire department's salaries and wages line. We need to increase this because we've incurred additional overtime for training, staff coverage, emergencies, uh, like the fire on Kings Road and storms like Tropical Storm Ida. And also, we are making, um, we have several important payments that are on the bills list tonight. We're paying the county approximately $40,000 for added and omitted taxes. So when property owners have reservations of renovations and when a building is constructed, the road charges taxes for that part of the year. The tax collect is sent out these bills October 12th, and this payment reflects the county's portion of those added and omitted tax bills. And the bill list also includes the payment to the Madison Board of Education um, for 190 days. This payment is for three quarters of the pilot that is due to the um, the Board of Education, the Green Village Road development. So if you recall, the, the BOE gets 32.5% of the pilot payment, that's a, a payment for those taxes that the borough receives. And this is an important benefit for them because it is revenue above and beyond what they can ask for as part of the budget process. And then again, on Monday, um, we will be wiring the BOE uh, approximately $3.6 million, which is their monthly portion of property due to them. Um, that's it, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Public Works and, en and Engineering, Mr. Hoover. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, from the Engineering Department at Hartley Dodge Memorial Plaza, they completed the electrical conduit installation, bollard foundations, and upper granite stair tread resets. For the uh, culvert uh, problem that we've had between New Jersey Transit and the Y, they completed the emergency response and videotape of the entire culvert. 
for uh, sustainable Madison. As the mayor has already mentioned, Kathy Cacavell is the sustainability hero for the month of November. Madison has certified silver certificate again, and the mayor and several members of the Sustainable Madison Advisory Committee, including myself, will be attending the Sustainable Jersey Annual Lunch in Atlantic City on November 16th. For the, the Madison Environmental Commission, uh, out of 591 towns in New Jersey, Madison has received two important awards from the Association of New Jersey Environmental Commission. Mayor Conley was chosen as the municipal leader for his collaboration <laughs> with other towns on the plastic bag and other efforts. The, the MEC was awarded an Environmental Achievement Award for the wildly popular Facebook group, Madison Swap and Share, as the MEC's Matt Kirsten Wallenstein, co-founder co of Notes, on our swap page, people can give away hard to repurpose items like a hand truck that needs a small repair, and they can also ask to borrow chairs for a party, bike racks, and similar items. By reducing the need for consumption and keeping household items out of the landfill, the swap group has become a role model for other towns. <clears throat> the Department of Public Works. Leaf pickup has started throughout the town. One complete pass of all borough streets has already been completed. You can get free leaf bags. They're available at the DPW garage on John Avenue and the borough clerk's office at Hartley Dodge. Residents are encouraged to recycle their Halloween pumpkins at the borough's new recycling center. Jetting of the borough sewer infrastructure started today and will be completed by November 19th. Regular maintenance of this infrastructure prevents blockages and backups into residents' homes and businesses. DPW staff has been busy winterizing borough facilities and decommissioning underground sprinkler systems. From the Shade Tree Commission, the spring 2022 street planting list is being finalized. For residents who have not yet requested a new tree, please contact the Department of Public Works at 973-593-3088. Madison continues to lose many trees due to disease, insects, and climate changes. Residents are urged to replace the lost trees with native hardwood canopy trees for current and future generations. To help in selecting trees, a revised list of success suggested spe tree species will be posted on the Borough's Shade Tree Board website. That's all, Mayor. Thank you very much. And now, uh, Community Affairs, Ms. Cohen. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, from the Downtown Development Commission and the Director of Business Development, the next regular meeting is going to be uh, via Zoom on Thursday, November 18th. There's two more weeks in the 2021 season for the Madison Farmers Market. Dodge Field, November 11th and 18th from 1 to 6. The market features live music every week from 4 to 6. If you haven't noticed, the new benches for downtown have been installed. The gateway and wayfinding project is continuing. The concept plans were shared with stakeholders and a survey was sent to gather feedback. And planning for holiday season events, including the Madison Holiday Arts Festival, Secret Santa Giveaway, Holiday Caroling, and more is underway. From the Chamber of Commerce, the Madison High School art students will be painting holiday themes on the windows of 15 businesses. Search for Rosie the Rose City Reindeer will begin Saturday, November 27th through Monday, December 13th. More than 40 chamber member businesses are participating. It's a free event, open to the public and for children only. For a list of participating businesses, please visit the chamber website at madisonnjchamber.org. At the Community Arts Center, the lighting grid is finally, hopefully, going to be installed in January. And the fall performance schedule included it is underway and information about performances can be found on the MACO website. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much. Our utilities. Ehrlich. Thank you, Mayor. I can't tell if my mic is on. You're on. Sounds okay? Okay. From the Electric Department, <clears throat> between October 28th and November 5th, the standby crew was called out six times for various issues, including repairs to service cables, connecting homes to the power lines, a power outage on Noe Ave, low-hanging cable and communication lines, and a power outage inside the home, which is unrelated to the street service. On Friday, October 29th, the electric department had a scheduled shutdown at 318 Main Street, Rosewood Condominiums at midnight, 
Overnight, the department transferred the underground electrical equipment to a new riser pole they had just installed while the residents slept. On Saturday, October 30th, JCPNL called the superintendent, Mr. Jim Matina, requesting assistance with power restoration after the windstorm on <coughs> the 29th. The department sent one crew and two bucket trucks to assist JCPNL in their restoration project. The water department reports that the fountain at Cole Park has been shut off for the season and the rest of the drinking water fountains and restrooms at the ball fields will be shut off this week. The water department assisted Drew University with a water shutdown on their campus. Drew University had experienced an underground steam line rupture, which in turn damaged a water line feeding some of the buildings on the east side of the campus. And finally, the water department reminds us to please winterize automatic sprinkler systems and shut off outside spigots from inside your house. That's all for utilities. Thank you very much. And health, Mr. Landrian. Thank you, Mayor. Last week, the health department wrapped up its annual flu clinics, including two public clinics and specialized clinics for the Madison Housing Authority, Madison Ambulance Corps, and borough employees. Residents who have not yet gotten their flu shot should do so at, as soon as possible as the flu season is upon us. Contact your health care provider, pharmacy, or the Madison Health Department to schedule your flu shot. Last week, the FDA and CDC released updated recommendations that children ages 5 to 11 receive a COVID-19 vaccination and provided emergency youth authorization for a low dose of Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine for this group. Atlantic Health, Walgreens, CVS pharmacies have begun scheduling appointments for those in this age group. Visit their website or covid19.nj.gov backslash finder to find a location for your child. The Madison Health Department is expected to receive pediatric doses and will announce clinics uh, when our first allotment is received. Uh, visit rosenet.org for updates on New Jersey's COVID-19 vaccine program, testing and other pandemic guidance. And finally, the Madison Annual Rabies Clinic for your dog or cat will be held on sad Saturday, December 4th. Registration and additional details will be released in the, up, in, the, in the coming weeks. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Just a couple of quick uh, follow-up things that I forgot to mention, uh, but the follow-up on Bob uh, report. I was there at the health department on uh, Thursday, got my booster shot, so uh, you know, very efficient, and uh, it was great to see residents taking advantage of that. And of course, in the, uh, since our last meeting, we've had an election. I want to congratulate Deb Cohen on her re-election and Eric Range on his election to the council. Um, Eric Range uh, would have been here tonight, but he, is, he had a um, conflict. But uh, as we traditionally do, um, he will be sitting in on our executive sessions uh, between now and uh, the new year, just so he can hit the ground running when uh, he takes his um, seat at the table come January. And um, one other uh, trivial thing on uh, my son sent me a text earlier today to remind me that it was 10 years ago today that I was elected mayor. So time flies and we're having fun. <laughs> All right, any communications or petitions? Uh, yes, mayor. Mayor and council received an email dated November the 4th from Ruth Zoeater of winding way thanking the mayor and council for all they are doing to save the drew forest another email on november the 4th from bruce carpenter of glenwild road um, also regarding the drew forest preservation and an email on november the 4th from uh, janet and steve krisha uh, thanking the mayor and council for their efforts in preserving the drew forest thank you very much and as noted uh, right now the only way to uh comment is being here in person so we encourage uh, residents to send emails to the clerk and the they while they will not be read verbatim we will recognize the um, um, the sender and also the topic so they will be uh, into the record that way and now we're on to our first of two invitations for discussion this one is limited to our discussion items and also our resolutions we will have another a second invitation for discussion later on the meeting when you may comment on any topic. These are the agenda discussion you may comment on. 
Uh, number one is our Open Space Recreation Historic Preservation Trust Fund, and that is uh, introducing an ordinance to restore the uh, the uh, rate back to two cents from the um, 1.8. The um, another on the draw to farm supplemental zo zoning ordinance, and this is to uh, update the zoning draw to farms to allow other uses in recognition of the changing office market. And then we have a um, first of uh, probably several between now and the end of the year of our 2021 budget transfers will be covered. So you can comment on those three or you can comment on these resolutions. And this is also so you can understand what is in the consent agenda when we get to it. Resolution 284 is authorizing a contract with Janine Bauer, Esquire for professional services regarding Madison Historic Preservation Commission. And uh, we have uh, updated this uh, resolution that the funds will come from an account deemed appropriate by the chief financial officer will, will not be coming from the Open Space Recreation and Historic Preservation Trust Fund. Resolution 285 is awarding professional service contract to Mott McDonald uh, for site remediation and Glenwild Road reconstruction project. And that is um, not to exceed $35,000 and is uh, being funded through Ordinance 1 2020. Resolution 286 is authorizing the uh, settlement of certain tax appeals. These are two, 207 Woodland, 33 Independence Court, 11 Colonial Way, and 80 uh, Green Village Road. Resol resolution 287, resolution appointing Paul Kasikowski to part-time position in Madison Police Department at uh, hourly rate of $35 an hour with no benefits up to 29 hours a week. And this is to work on the statutory required expungent work re related to uh, the recent legalization of marijuana. Resolution 288 is resolution authorizing use of emergency operations center room at public safety building by the First Baptist Church and Zufall Health for uh, a booster shot clinic. Resolution 289 is author and the date of that, because that might be helpful for those out in the audience, is uh, December 17th from 10 to 2. Uh, resolution 289, use of the, also the, that same room, the Emergency Operations Center for, uh, by Fairleigh Dickinson for an undergraduate course. Resolution 290 is authorizing a contract with Talva Energy LLC for professional service related to solar carports. Resolution 291, resolution Borough Madison ratifying the purchase order for rock salt from Atlantic Salt of Lowell, Massachusetts an amount not to exceed $40,000 appropriated under the public, public works uh, budget. Resolution 292 is approving raffle licenses submitted by the Madison Ice Hockey Booster Club. Resolution 293 is ratifying the award of purchase order contract for Everbrine liquid melting agent to Reed Systems of Ellenville, New York. And this is um, funded through also the uh, public works budget. Resolution 294, authorizing release of performance bond for HQM properties for premises designated as 7 Elm Street. Resolution 295, authorizing the 2021 budget transfers, which will be outlined by our CFO shortly. Resolution 296 is authorizing use of, um, uh, uh, re re uh, authorizing use of up to $2,375 in use of open space trust funds and forestry for forestry mowing at the Madison Recreation Center. And those are the resolutions you may comment on. So anyone here in person that wishes to comment any, uh, any of those resolutions or the uh, discussion items, please step up to the lectern. When you are called, when you're recognized, please state your name and address, the agenda item you are discussing. Please write the name and address on the clipboard there and try to keep your comments to three minutes. We do give you a one minute grace period and you'll be asked to stop at four minutes. Anyone wishing to speak, please step up to the lectern. Good evening, Judy Kroll, 27 Laurel Way. Um, I wanted to just ever so briefly comment on the um, open space, uh, I guess it's a proposal that's coming forward tonight. Introduce it. Introdu that's being introduced. 
And I, I just very simply would like to um, ask the council and the mayor to set a tax rate that's consistent with the positive outcome for the Drew Forest and any other recreational or conservation objectives that might be before the uh, council now or down the road, and also for our, our taxpayers so that it's a win-win scenario. There's a tiny little chance I might come back later to talk about something else, but that's, that's it for now. We're permitted to do that in the next round. And uh, we will discuss it shortly, but um, the ordinance allows for the rate to be put to the uh, maximum that was approved by a uh, referendum. Um, many years ago. Many years ago, thank you. <laughs> it, can, it, can, it cannot exceed two cents. Yeah, but it, so, it, so it would go back to the max. Anyone thank else you. wishing to please speak, you. please step forward. I'm Marilyn Michelski. I live at 16 Academy Road, which is adjacent to the Drew University property. And I uh, want to speak in support of restoring, restoring the full open space tax for many purposes, but especially the purpose of preserving the 53 acres of Drew Forest, which is an irreplaceable resource. When they have cut down trees and we've lost forested areas behind Academy Road, and the other roads that adjoin that forest, the, the water that comes down the hill and into our property is just a, uh, a picture of what happens when we lose the trees and their ability to absorb the water and make our environment a better place to live. So I support that and um, want it restored to the full amount. Thank you. Thank you, Marilyn. Anyone else wishing to comment on items on the agenda? Hi, uh, my name's Kate Ransom Solomon. I'm at 6 Highland Avenue. And um, I'd also like to speak in favor of the uh, restoring the full open space um, up fund amount. Um, I believe that this will be really important in um, supporting the preservation of the Drew Forest, and especially as we um, move forward with, with um, looking to outside groups to help fund that work. So, and I, I really want to thank the council for their leadership in, in working on um, preserving that forest. So, thank you. Thank you. Anyone wishing to speak, please step forward. Hello, my name is Lisa Jordan. Um, I'm at 36 Lavonica Way, apartment B. Uh, I wanted to also speak in support of the proposal to expand the uh, funding for open space in Madison. I have uh, two small children that are warm and snuggly right now, and I was debating coming here tonight. And I thought, well, I, all the life that's out there. <laughs> There's so rich life, so much rich life in the forest, the birds, the insects, the trees. And it's not the same as a yard. It is really a rich and wonderful resource. So I am so grateful for these people who come and speak in support and for the council for their consideration and for seeing that area for not just property, not just land use for, any purpose but for seeing the like intrinsic and wonderful value of that wilderness and it'd be wonderful as stewards of the that area for the town to become true stewards to make it accessible more broadly for greater public use so thanks for considering it and i hope you get a chance to visit if you haven't before um, it's a wonderful place thank you
Good evening. Uh, my name is Peter Freed. I live at 38 Morris Place. Um, we've lived in Fairwoods for 42 years. Um, and I would just like to briefly add my voice to those supporting the resolution to um, increase the rate to supply the funding, which will be used for the um, preservation of open spaces, such as the Drew Forest. Um, I think the Drew Forest uh, is an essential part of the character both of that part of Madison and of Drew University. Uh, and I um, worry about starting a chain of developing parcels of land. And if this is the first, will there be more? So I think it's very important um, to follow through on this resolution. I appreciate what the council is doing with regard to coming up with this um, method of, of uh, matching some funds with whoever is going to um, also support preservation of the forest. So thank you for all you've done, and uh, thank you for letting me speak. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak, please step forward. Seeing none, close this part of the meeting, but again, we will be uh, coming back to a uh, fully open discussion uh, time after the um, hearing for ordinances. And now we move on to our agenda discussions. And the uh, first one is the aforementioned uh, Open Space Recreation Historic Trust Fund. Uh, Austri, I'll let you uh, tee that one up. And um, while your report came through okay, just uh, make sure you're probably close to the microphone so we can hear you loud and clear. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Um, can you hear me now? That sounds good, yes. Great. In 2004, um, Madison residents um, did overwhelmingly vote for a two cents tax to be dedicated for the open space, recreation, and historic preservation. And after we did that, um, we received from the county one of the largest, probably the second largest um, grant ever received by a municipality when we purchased the MRC. We received $7.3 million. So um, the grant, uh, the money that we have in our open space trust funds leverages other grants, and that's why it's so important right now to, um, there are so few open spaces available left, and Drew Forest being one of them, that increasing this tax will demonstrate uh, Madison's commitment that it's important to keep the forest as well as the viability of the college and um, to, the, to the board of commissioners on the county level. And they'll be the ones deciding who gets grant money. And um, restoring this um, tax to two cents will give us um, some, I want to call it wiggle room, to figure out how to finance the package um, to um, preserve the group for us. And um, so if anybody has any questions, I can take them now. Any questions? Deb? Uh, Austri, just to confirm so people understand, it could also, this is not just to go, this money won't go 100% to the Drew Forest. It'll be used for things like the Dodge Playground, which we didn't get the grant for, or other things around town. Correct. That fit. Correct. Um, you're absolutely right, because there are projects that this council supported, like the, the uh, finishing of the master plan for Dodge Field, which includes the field house as well as the playground, handicap accessible playground, it includes three phases of trails for Memorial Park as well as our handicap accessible trail that will be being built this spring at the MRC. And um, there are a few other projects, though, East Wing of the Hartley Dodge Memorial as well as the plaza. All those um, are still on the table and, and increasing the tax to our uh, not increasing, restoring the tax to two cents will greatly help Madison preserve the things that matter to us and de um, define our character as a town. And, and, and to be clear, while the ordinance does mention uh, the Drew Forest as a driving principally behind uh, raising the, uh, returning the uh, open space tax to its uh, previous level, this does not put, um, as Deb's question alluded to, this does not put any restrictions on the money and any actual appropriation of money uh, for Drew or any other project would be done to the regular process of uh, introduction of ordinance and um, allocation of funding. Uh, Bob? And, oh, you know, 
I, I want to add that uh, the impact on the average home in Madison, if we um, restore the taxes, $13.34 a year. So in case you did not catch that at home, again, uh, that was $13.40 a year on the average um, assessed home in Madison, annual basis for that uh, 0.2 cents. Yes, Bob. Astri? Um, just a point of clarification. You're raising it from, we're raising it from 1.8 cents to 2 cents. So it's a very small increase. Yes, it's one tenth of 1% of our right. total tax bill or something. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Mm hmm. Any other questions or comments on um, this ordinance? All right. The uh, ordinance 44 is listed for an introduction, and we'll come back up later in the agenda. Joel the Farm Supplemental Zoning Ordinance. Oscar, you want to take that or you want me to tee that up? Um, if it's easier for you, Mayor, because you, I'm not coming through clearly, feel free. Um, otherwise, I'll, I can do it. I'll, I'll start, and uh, since I always forget things, you'll fill, fill in for me. Um, okay. So as, as I mentioned, um, as it, when I listed the ordinances, I, um, or the discussion items that this is in response to the fact that the office world is forever changed in this uh, not only during the pandemic but the post pandemic world and so we're trying to um, update the zoning for uh, Geralda Farms to reflect that to encourage uh, use of the existing buildings. so this relates to existing buildings that draw the farms and expands the usage um, the planning board had a subcommittee that has worked on this for several months, and the uh, planning board discussed this uh, at their last meeting, so it is, was forwarded from the planning board with their uh, review. Uh, and part of the comments that came out is this is an ever-changing world, so this is probably not the end-all with the uh, zoning for draw the farms. I'm sure we'll be back in, um, uh, in the new year with some other uh, tweaks on it, but um, we have one of the greatest would have been a corporate office park and it can be one of the greatest uses of uh, the buildings in the future. So some of the uh, items that uh, would be, become conditional uses there, assisted living residences, supportive housing, short-term acute physical re rehabilitation centers, con con continuing care retirement communities, uh, culinary destination centers, including restaurant with outdoor dining, um, a, and could have things such as cafe, bakery, a licensed brew pub, a licensed brewery, a cidery, meadery, meadery, winery or distillery, and that would all be subject to many provisions that, including the size of these uh, facilities. Certainly do not think, do not think Anheuser-Busch, think more of a uh, twin elephant type of thing. Um, <laughs> Farm, farm, vineyard, garden, uh, for purposes of supply and restaurant and or brewery and, uh, and so on. Uh, art gallery, work lofts. So those are um, some, of the, some of the changes and obviously there's more details behind that. Austria, you want to add to anything I might have missed? Well, I, I think one thing that's important is we've crafted it in such a way that um, some of the for example, the uh, assisted living or the supportive housing um, are uh, will have a, a component that supports uh, our obligation to affordable housing, uh, but it won't burden our school systems. Um, so we've we've I think we've done a really good job in trying to repurpose those buildings and 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 meet our housing obligation. Um, so, um, low and moderate income housing obligation in very creative ways. Thank you for yeah, reinforcing that. And um, just as a reminder for the the pressure on this, Quest left four years ago. That building is still empty, so it was not filled before the um, pandemic, and uh, not going to have a single tenant, a single use tenant to be in there. So it needs you know a new life. Uh, there is another major tenant in one of the buildings that um, will um, still has several years left in a lease. They are not bringing any of their employees back into the building. They are going to a central, centralized location in Newark. Um, and that's just a, just a couple of stories of uh, 
the buildings. I think we're, we're basically fairly close to a 50% uh, vacancy rate at Geralda Farms, and that is playing out in office parks across the country and um, being able to, again, as I mentioned, take advantage of the great property would be uh, great for Madison. Any, any other questions or comments from the council? All right, this is Ordinance 45-2021, which is listed for introduction. And now, our 2021 budget transfers. Jim Burnett. Still knows the way to the lectern, that's good, after all these months. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, Councilwoman Bailey did a great job explaining why we're doing this budget transfer and how the process works. One thing I want to point out is it has to be a cash neutral. We can't increase appropriations. We, can't, we have to find appropriations and transfer them from one location to the other. In the resolution, it uh, clearly shows that we need $60,000 in the fire department over time, and we're going to take it from DPW fuel, from general liability insurance, and from sewage processing, $20,000 each from those three budget lines. We kind of have to hunt around and find where we have a little bit of excess to be able to transfer it over. And that's how it works. And I'll entertain any questions if anybody has any. Any questions for Jim? Okay. All right. Very good. And uh, as mentioned, we'll probably see in the next two meetings we have between now and the end of the year, we'll probably see some more of these. This is resolution 295 on the consent agenda. And now we move on for ordinance of hearing. Will the clerk please read the statement? The ordinance is scheduled for hearing. We're introduced by title and passed on the first reading at the regular meeting of the council held on October the 25th, 2021. Were posted and filed according to law, and copies were made available to the general public requesting same. I call up ordinances for second reading. Ask the clerk to read said ordinance by title. Ordinance 42-2021. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison amending Chapter 195, Article 5 of the Borough Code to establish standards for electric vehicle supply and service equipment and make ready parking spaces. I open the hearing for Ordinance 42-2021. Anyone wishing to comment on this ordinance, please step forward. Seeing, oh, seeing, oh, there we go. Uh, yeah, public that you may comment on this ordinance. So this is the um, establishing um, standards for electric vehicle. Should I wait until you actually say what it is? Um, I can't comment on it. It's good. We, we, we actually can't, we won't have the discussion until we until we close the hearing. So um, I'll, I'll do a quick explanation for the public. This is uh, basically reflects a state required ordinance um, related to um, standards for electric vehicle. And so that means in f future developments will be required to have um, spaces for electric vehicles or at least be ready to convert spaces for electric vehicles. And uh, this is not, this is different than the uh, the slots that we've already made available throughout town through our grants. So this is a, except for some minor tweaks, it's the exact state, recommended state ordinance. Oh, so there's not really any, oh sorry, Tom Harlan Pudis, 27 Palmoy Road. So um, by putting that requirement in for development, there is, this is only for commercial properties, Mayor, it's not for new residential properties or is there any benefits? Uh, it would not be for single, um, I'm trying to remember, I don't think it's for, for a mul it's multifamily. For multifamily. Multifamily. Multifamily, yes, but not single, not single homes. Okay. I, I had brought up in the past that, you know, for the borough to move in the direction where they encourage and promote electric vehicle charging as one example, as a, in, in addition to other electric appliances in our homes or blowers, which everybody has a problem with the gas blowers, it could be a positive for Madison in the long run because we could generate revenue from people actually charging their cars and using the electricity from our grid or charging anything that uh, you know they can use electricity for in lieu of natural gas or gasoline. So this maybe is just a small step in that direction, but hopefully we, we move towards that very soon. It's, I don't really understand how <coughs> it, it's actually mandated that a multifamily has electric charging. So like as an example, the uh, Lincoln Place building that's gonna go up hopefully over the course of the next year, will they be required 
to have some electric charging uh, stations? The, 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 there, since that it was approved before this ordinance, no. Okay. But, I, but moving forward? Moving forward, yes. yes. Okay, so like our affordable housing project on Walnut. Correct. That, but that will be mandated. Yes. Well, will it have yep. like two spots per apartment? No? 15%. 15% yep. of the spaces oh. will be required to either be have EV charging equipment or ready to install EV charging equipment. Mm. And then the developer or owner needs to phase in the make ready spaces one third each year adding charging equipment until all 15% have the equipment installed. Oh. So, so that could take a while. It's over three years, right? It's, it's, yeah. but it's 15% of the spaces in a multifamily sure. development. Sure. But the borough could also incentivize it by saying, here's some, 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 uh, whatever it is, a token to say, let's do it now. So that all of a sudden we have out of 30 spots, you have six spots that are electric and those people in the building might want to use those they might want to buy electric cars and all of a sudden start charging their cars in those six spots and you could get five hundred dollars a year for each car that's charged. i'm just throwing out round numbers rachel i don't know exactly what it is i think this is the part where we're not supposed to engage in live right. debate so I'm, i don't want to i i love your right, ideas Tom, but great. we're not supposed to this like, is how it used to be hash it out so. you're right <laughs> but we'll, we'll yeah we'll, anyway, we'll we'll respond to that but yeah I'm just making you. suggestions I, i'm not trying to debate you rachel sorry no. about that if it don't no. across that way I'm just making a suggestion. Anyway, I didn't know the whole extent of yep. it. So you'll elaborate to it. And when the solar committee reconvenes, then we really have something to talk about, right, Mr. Burnett? <laughs> okay. Thank you, Tom. And that, it's, that certainly was not a, um, it was not a debate. That was a very good discussion. And I appreciate uh, Councilwoman Ehrlich answering some of those questions. And some of your comments, um, while not part of this or, um, ordinance, would be very appropriate, especially since we own our own, own utility. Am I allowed to talk? Yes. Okay. I'm Claire Whitcomb, 12 Fairwood Road. I just wanted to add that the Environmental Commission, uh, since January, has been requested basically what this ordinance uh, says, that additional EV charging stations, stations and conduit laid so that at the movie theater, uh, you know, that, that we're not going to have to tear up cement and do this over again. So the, the I don't know exactly what the developers have agreed to, but we've been asking for this, knowing that the state regulations were going to come down and knowing that uh, Governor Murphy's goal is 330,000 electric vehicles by 2025, which is aggressive. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Yep. Anyone else wishing to comment on Ordinance 42-2021? Seeing none, I close the hearing. Mayor, I move Ordinance 42-2021. Second. Any further council dis discussion? I think it was fairly well covered, but anything else to add? Okay, roll call vote, please. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Ehrlich? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. I declare Ordinance 42-2021 adopted and finally passed and ask the clerk to publish notice there of a newspaper and file the ordinance in accordance with the law. I call up Ordinance 43-2021. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $150,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for security and radio upgrades. I open the hearing for Ordinance 43-2021. Anyone wishing to comment on this ordinance, please step forward. Seeing none, I close the hearing. Mayor, I move Ordinance 43-2021. Second. Any council discussion? Roll call vote, please. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Ehrlich? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. I declare Ordinance 43-2021 adopted and finally passed and ask the clerk to publish notice thereof in the newspaper and follow the ordinance in accordance with the law. And now we're on to our second of invitation for discussion. This is when you may comment on any topic, including any that were already discussed. Um, Again, please step to the lectern, state your name and address, write the same on the clipboard, and try to keep your comments to three minutes, but uh, we will give you a grace and stop you at four. Uh-oh. Pen. Okay. Oh, good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Um, I'm Christine Hepburn. I live at 
one lightning bug hollow road in Hardwick. Um, I uh, just want to say now that we can't be Zooming in anymore, uh, I'm going to go away for the winter. I wish you all a good winter, and I'll see you, I'm somewhat sad to say, I'll see you in the spring, I'm sure. Um, I am here tonight with my old friends Judy Kroll and Julia Summers. I'm here to present a petition, and I just wanted to say that oh, well over 15 years ago, Judy Kroll and I, with advice from Julia Summers, presented a petition <sighs> in in advance of uh, getting the MRC purchase. We presented it to Mayor Doyle in Florham Park, asking not to rezone all of the Exxon property. We had paper, signatures only, and about 1,200. Uh, tonight I wanna present a petition. Um, this, this day and age, um, and you know the petition, it is uh, Save the Drew Forest Preserve Petition. Uh, we put it online on change.org. Uh, very shortly after you passed, you can get back to the microphone. So, oh, yeah, sorry. You passed a resolution um, saying that you would like to do what you can to preserve the Drew Forest, and I thank you for that. So I won't bother with what the petition says. It's basically what you all already think, and I realize I don't need to do all this for you. I'm really doing it for Drew University, your partner in this project. I hope. Um, to, so this is for President Schwartz and Chairman of the Board um, Landis, and uh, this is the petition. It was posted, interestingly enough, on the afternoon of June 8th, exactly five months ago. Uh, as of today, the online signatures, and there are some offline, but the online are at 10,123. Last I looked. Um, I downloaded yesterday, so this and printed, this would be, um, I just stay by the mic. <laughs> this would be the 10,000, um, uh, only 10,101. And um, there's, there's 22 a page. Now the thing is we are, we do have environmental concerns, so this is a fake out. I, I printed the first several pages of signatures. <laughs> I printed the last six pages. It is 506 pages, so. It is printed at the end, but the rest of these pages are not. So we can, we can use that paper for other purposes. <laughs> oh, you can take that home. Yes, please, 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 please do so. Yes. If it were all, you know, printed, it would be this literally. Now I could be off. And now you get back to the microphone again, sorry. <laughs> I could be off by, by five pages, but this is very, very close to the actual list of six. Who are all these people? Uh, well, there are lots of Madisonians, very many local to Madison, uh, all the surrounding one, one minute, town. Oh, good Lord. Um, in contrast to who showed up tonight, lots of men, uh, former mayors of Madison, for sure, some environmental um, people from not around here interested in the environment. I'll have to write and send you stuff about more of them. I've kind of done a content analysis, but it's just what you would expect, and it's According to the comments, which we also have here, um, there's about 300 comments. Everybody agrees. Um, people local care about the forest, and people who aren't local care about services that the forest provides for all of us. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you for taking, uh, making the trip. And just to uh, give some background in your comments related to the MRC and uh, the pre presentation of the um, petition to Mayor Doyle in um, Florham Park, just to show how Madison is dedicated to creative ways to preserve open space. The outcome of that uh, process was Madison purchasing 49 acres in, within the border of Florham Park. Uh, 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 land that was zoned for at least two office buildings that um, certainly um, at least one I'm sure would have been built if not if not both the uh, after we purchased it the uh, borders were then uh, moved along with a border change in along Park Avenue some so a section of Madison went to uh, became part of Florham Park and a large section of the 49 acres plus the back end of the Madison High School became part of Madison so that is how creative thinking can make a big difference in the world.
My name is Mary Jane Lunt, and I live at 10 Highview Terrace, and I'm not as dramatic. I don't have 10,000 signatures, but I do have hundreds of signatures that I personally have collected a lot of them at the farmer's market. For those of you who haven't seen me there, I'm behind this big sign. But in any way, we have, uh, we have 191 people who live in Madison mostly, almost 85% um, I guess, I, I didn't count them exactly, who didn't want to share their email addresses and I think some of us here also feel that way sometimes, they don't want to. So those are another 191 people of Madison who say, please save the Drew Forest. Thank you, and I will add these to Christine's. <laughs> 10,000, thanks. Thank you, thank you very much. Anyone else wish to the cotton? Yep, Tom, come on up. Tom Harlem Pudis, uh, 27 Pomeroy Road. Thank you for having me back again. So I want to also come and support all these uh, diligent people who want to stay, help us save some open space, very valuable open space in town. And I just would like to sit here, and maybe you discussed this before I walked in, Mayor and Council, so excuse me if I'm asking you to repeat yourselves, but the current open space tax is about $650,000, if I'm right. So what will the increase in this, this small percentage of increase in the open space tax actually uh, amount to for the, for the open space tax, but uh, the, the funds that we're gonna raise and then um, will that be enough for us to actually go after a $5 million or $10 million uh, grant from Morris County and from the state like you guys were so uh, successful in doing for the uh, MRC? Hopefully you can match that with, uh, with all your connections now and through the support of the 10,101 uh, petition signatures. Uh, I also don't know if the open space, open space and um, historic preservation committee has met again to redo their projects list because I glanced at the project list before I came in here, and there maybe are some things on there that might be either removed or tabled. Obviously, things are changing now, so we want to repurpose some of the money for something as important as this. Some of the items on there you know I have had questions about before anyway, and a lot of residents have too. Like, if, is there still a Masonic Lodge budget item on there? Um, the cost of a new Dodge Field House, I'm not even sure what that entails. It's an exorbitant amount of money. Uh, the All Access is Playground, I'm not sure the extent of it. It's a very large amount of money also, so I'm not I'd like to know if the committee has met since then to go back and review that. There was a purchase of a pocket park somewhere for $400,000. I mean, it's not little money. So if, you're, if your raise goes from six fifty dollars to $800,000, we probably need more than $250,000 a year for the next five years to be able to entice Drew to step back and, and, help, and let the community take over the land and they can do something else with the money that we're going to give them. So if that's already been discussed, I didn't hear it. But we'll, we'll cover some of the, 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 will. those are good questions. So I'll let you keep going. Okay. Um, well, I think that, uh, what else was I gonna say? Oh, I was just gonna ask like, who's actually speaking to the uh, president and the chairman of Drew now? Like, I get this impression that they're not communicating with the borough and that they wanna go in their own direction. And, I'm, and I'd just like clarification to know if that's accurate because you don't wanna mislead the community either to make us think that they're not really open to this opportunity that you're gonna raise money for them to, in lieu of them just developing it and their um, benefit could be the same. So yep. if that's well, true, then we should know. Um, okay, Mayor, well, that, I mean, this, this has, obviously has a lot more information that, that we need to see so that we can support the, 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 the whole um, endeavor even further, but it's a great, obviously a great movement by the borough and by the council 
to, to try and make it happen. So thanks again for all your efforts. Thank you, Tom. And to cover some of your questions, uh, how much more, you know, the, um, and Jim may have that answer, but some quick, uh, so at, right now we're at 1.8 cents, so if we're going up two tenths of a cent, so it's a little more than 10% uh, increase. So it's not, you know, it's, it, it's not, you know, it's, it's the maximum we can buy the referendum, it's the maximum we can go to, but that money can be leveraged. Obviously, as we've done with the restoration of the plaza, with the MRC and everything else, it's, it's leveraging our dollars for, um, as a multiplier to um, grants from the county or, or green acres. Um, and that is the in, importance. Also, it's, we may be, you know, the, the ability, just as we did with the MRC, is bonding. So instead of using the money for an outright purchase, you're actually covering the debt service. Um, as far as the, the, the project list, it, it is, one way to view that is a wish list. It's a work in progress until a actual project is funded. It is only on the wish, wish list. And so while that list may not actually change because we don't want to lose track of those priorities, every decision going forward will be put through the filter of we have this major commitment coming up and uh, we, we are um, certainly not going to forget that, that uh, saving open space. And I kind of explained this before in the various priorities of um, you, you look at the three major areas of open space recreation and historic preservation. One is recreation. You, know, you, know, you mentioned the playground and uh, other things, the uh, field house and so on. Those are things that if you don't do it today, you can do it tomorrow because it will still be there, it'll still be a project. Historic preservation is probably the next one as far as higher on the list. If a Masonic Lodge, the oldest church in the town of Madison, were to go into such disrepair as we've seen some historic buildings disappear, <coughs> that opportunity is gone. But you can probably kick the can down a year or so, but you can't kick it down too many years. And the biggest one is, if open space is gone, it is gone forever. And so that becomes the one that is the prior highest priority that you have to really attack because there's only one chance to do it. That's one way to look at the filter. And a quick little re reminder as it's been great to hear People here and all the applause, often I've had the, the guidelines in our gatherings and comments is that we try to hold back the applause. Madison has never been a place that boos people, but the problem is if you're the person that doesn't get the applause, you sit down and say, oh, what did I miss on? So if you, I appreciate your enthusiasm, but if you could hold back. Julia, welcome. Thank you, Mayor. Well, I'd say one, one more, one last thing, I'm sorry, I, I, uh, from Tom's comments. Through communication, I can rest assured, Tom Schwarz knows exactly how to get a hold of me. I know how to get a hold of him. I told, he is aware, very much aware, that tonight we are introducing his ordinance. I gave him a call to say, to show our level of uh, commitment to this, we are, to use a word people hate to say here, but reality is we're raising a tax. And that's our commitment to this level. So he, he is aware that th this is what we're, we are doing. If going back to the level where it was, but still we're going to be collecting more money even though it's you know $13 per family. All right, Julia, now you can. Mayor, thank you very much. I think you were setting me up for getting no applause, but uh, <laughs> uh, I'm Julia Summers. Um, I am a resident of Green Village. I live at 501 Spring Valley Road. I am the executive director of the New Jersey Highlands Coalition. And once upon a time, I was the executive director of the Great Swamp Watershed Association. And when I was the executive director of the Great Swamp Portishead Association for about 20 years, I had the great privilege of working with Chris Hepburn and Judy Kroll, who helped establish Madison Matters and made good trouble in Madison, I would <laughs> like to think. I hope you agree. Um, and so it's delightful to be here. And Astri, it is very nice to see you. I have to say that this, this technology, I'm so impressed. <laughs> it's like, look, this is like well, a 20 I, I second section here. Yeah. It's amazing that I have you there. Anyway. Oh, thank you. I, am, I just wanted to talk about the petition that has been 
submitted today because there are some truly remarkable people that have uh, signed on to that petition. This is not just residents of, of Madison and Morris County and your local communities. This includes people like Joan Maloof, who is the head of, of a, the Old Forest Network, which is a, non a national nonprofit organization that talks about the importance of preserving old forests, who has signed on to this petition. And it includes a member of the New Jersey Highlands Coalition, where I'm, I have been the executive director since 2012, um, uh, who, Leslie Sauer, who uh, wrote The Once and Future Forest with Ian McCarg, who is a really seriously, they both are big deals in the forest restoration world. Um, and Leslie's done a ton of work for Morris County, and they have both signed on to that petition. What you're trying to do here in Madison is really important. And it's important to me because I am a local resident and I live nearby and I was the executive director of the Great Swamp Watershed Association for a very long time. And I know that how important that forest is on top of the moraine uh, here that we are preserving your water supply uh, here in Madison, because that is the most perfect recharge you have, and that forest cleans your water at no cost. We are constantly reminded that, believe it or not, in New Jersey, the most developed state in the Union, we have the fourth least expensive water supply in the country. Uh, and that's because in little New Jersey, we have preserved lots of important places, such as the Drew Forest. So I'm here to support what you're trying to do. It is extremely important. And you may think this is an important thing for Madison, but it's an important thing for a lot of other places around here too. So thank you for very much for listening to me. You're all welcome to applaud. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Julia. Anyone else wishing to speak who has not spoken in this round? Please step forward. Seeing none, I close this part of the agenda and we now move on to introduction of ordinances. Will the clerk please read the statement? Ordinances scheduled for reading have a, have a hearing date set for November the 22nd, 2021. All will be published in the Madison Eagle, posted on the bulletin board, and made available to members of the public requesting copies. I call up ordinances for first reading and ask the borough clerk to read said ordinance by title, Ordinance 44-2021. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison amending Ordinance 7-2013, which reduced the municipal open space recreation and historic preservation tax rate. Mayor, I move Ordinance 44-2021. Second. Any further discussion? Yes, Rachel. I just want to recognize the tremendous grassroots effort that the uh, residents here, the supporters from the region, and frankly, you know, Drew alumni from around the world, around the country have lent to this effort. It's remarkable what this dedicated group of volunteers has done to raise the profile for the Drew Forest, the way that you've worked together to um, recruit so many supporters to the cause is remarkable. And your dedication in bringing this issue to the council week after week has been remarkable. So thank you for your advocacy and your hard work. Any further discussion? Roll call vote, please. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Ehrlich? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Ordinance 45-2021. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison amending Chapter 195 of the Borough Code entitled Land Development Oops, no title. regarding zoning. Mayor, I move Ordinance 45-2021. Second. Any council discussion? Yes, Rachel. So this, this uh, subject of um, permitting Proposing new conditional uses for Geralda Farms is really uh, very close to my heart. It's a, an extraordinary effort that the planning board has undertaken to think creatively about repurposing those buildings. Um, their vision in imagining new kinds of uses for those existing structures is really inspiring. I think it's worth pointing out that 
Most of the proposed conditional uses are required to use 90 to 100 percent of reuse of the existing structures and be housed in the existing buildings there. And I, I just want to um, recognize that the, the vision that this conjures up of Geralda Farms being this hub of a, a cultural and um, uh, like a food destination, um, a, a busy place for people to come and enjoy the, the park-like setting. Um, as, as Council Member Bailey pointed out, the fact that the proposed housing is uh, for assisted living and supportive living, um, which includes uh, low-income requirements, it, it's just a really, it's a great package. And it really gives me a feeling of excitement to imagine these new uses in, in what is becoming sadly a disused space uh, that Madison has so long depended on as a, frankly, a, you know, a, a commercial ratepayer for our town. So thank you to the planning board for bringing forth this great ordinance. And I look forward to the future of what Geralda Farms can become. Any other comments? I'll just reinforce the, what just hit me as uh, you were speaking, Rachel, is the fact that, you know, Pretty much for, for, since its inception, it's been a gated campus, which means most of the public have not been in, able to enjoy what was Geraldine Rockefeller Dodge's estate. And if this moves forward and the um, common space uh, uh, embraces it, which I would anticipate that this campus would be open to the public for many of these uses. So Great point. another bonus. Hey, roll call vote, please. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Ehrlich? Yes. Mr. Landry? Yes. Okay, we now move on to consent agenda resolutions where the clerk reads a statement. Consent agenda resolutions will be enacted with a single motion. Any resolution requiring expenditure is supported by a certification of availability of funds. Any resolution requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda. All resolutions will be reflected in full in the minutes. Mayor, I move resolution 284-2021 to resolution 296-2021. Second. And a reminder, this includes the uh, revision to 284 that strikes the use of uh, open space funds for that. Uh, any further discussion or any that need to be pulled? Roll call vote, please. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Ehrlich? Yes. Mr. Landry? Yes. All right, there is no unfinished business. So approval of vouchers. Will the uh, clerk please read the voucher totals? Return fund, $1,130,154.70. The general capital fund, $204,874.92. Electric operating fund, $136,002.10. <laughs> The water operating fund, $3,506.22. And from the trust, $12,891.92. The total is $1,487,429.86. Do I have a motion for the vouchers? Mayor, I move approval of the vouchers. Second. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Ehrlich? Yes. Mr. Landry? Yes. Right. New business, and I think HPC does not require council confirmation. Is that correct? That is correct. So, so I'd like to make the, um, announce the following, following appointment not requiring council concert, uh, confirmation. This is uh, Adrian Novak to the uh, Historic Preservation Commission as alternate to, to member unexpired two-year term through December 31st, 2022. The um, opening was a regular member, so our Alt 1 and current Alt 2 will all move up one slot. So that's announced, and with that. Mayor, I move that we adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, and it's so great to see faces here again. <laughs> Thanks for coming out. <laughs>